Hi, everyone. Welcome to our week two of our financial literacy webinar series. My name is Isabel. I'm the co-president of the Cascadia chapter of credit unions. And today I will be going over credit and credit building. I have five years of experience in the credit union world. So I'll be speaking on what I think is the most effective aspects from credit from the view of a lender. So let's dive right in. What goes into a credit report? These are some of the highlights of what a lender looks for. Um, it's important to check the report at least every six months to check the information. Lenders use this information to make sure that what you put on your credit application is accurate. Any sort of mismatch address, social security number, employment history could be an issue if it all doesn't match up. Harder inquiries happen when you apply for new credit lines. They affect your credit score and make it decrease. Of course, it goes back up with time, but it's important to be mindful of how many hard inquiries you're doing. And soft inquiries are regular data that gets sent out to lenders and potential lenders for a broad view of your credit to see if they could approve you for certain products or not. These can either happen by the bureaus doing them automatically without you knowing, or when you check your credit yourself. Um, one way to check your credit yourself that's super efficient is annualcreditreport.com. And that would be an example of a soft credit inquiry. Um, another thing that goes into a credit report is the delinquent history, which obviously this is something that lenders really look for. Um, any collections, late payments, charge-offs, bankruptcies, and I'll kind of go into that a, a little bit more detail throughout this presentation. So what are lenders looking at? Credit utilization. Um, how much of your credit are you using? How long have you had your lines of credits and are you using them responsibly? Length of credit. How much experience do you have with credit? Have you proven yourself responsible with the credit that you have now? Why should a lender trust you? Which also relates to payment history. Have you been active enough with paying your bills on time every month? Are you a trust? Are you trustworthy for a lender? Lenders also look at your credit score. However, the actual number isn't as detrimental as people think. Um, a credit score is not on your report, but it is something that they can see. Your credit score can be provided by the lenders receiving your application, and your report determines your credit score. There are other avenues of finding your credit score, such as through your current financial institutions or current credit card companies. How do I read a credit report? So as a lender, there are times where I've helped, you know, adults and they have never seen their credit report. They don't even know what it looks like. They don't even know what it means. So I will kind of be diving on that a little bit today, just to give you guys an example of what a credit report looks like from a lender's point of view. The three bureaus I have them listed there are TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Every lender is different and every lender uses their own uh, bureau. Not every, not every lender goes through all of the bureaus. Most of the time they just stick to one. So this is one of the most important things that you should be checking for your credit report. And um, this is any identifying information. So as you can see here, this, I mean, it looks very clunky, but really what it is, is just your personal identification information. Um, so this is what you should be checking and making sure it's updated. It gets mainly updated by credit inquiries, um, sometimes bank accounts, or even if you get new services such as insurance or new phone lines, but just making sure that the credit bureaus have your most recent address, your most recent um, phone numbers, and that they have the social security listed on file correctly. And sometimes bureaus will have any employment information, not all the time, but like I said, that gets reported when you do any sort of new credit inquiry. So just things to be mindful of and things to make sure are accurate on your report. So why are inquiries important? Inquiries are important because lenders want to see if you're rate shopping and if you do too many inquiries, it will decrease your score. 
Um, like I said, your score can go up over time after the inquiries are done, but if you have really great credit and everything looks good, but you have a lot of inquiries, then that could definitely decrease your score and be the answer to a low credit score when you apply for multiple lines of credits or multiple loans. A lot of inquiries also could be a sign of identity theft. Someone could be using your social to apply for multiple lines of credit or loans that you're unaware of. So it's always good to note them and make sure that they are accurate. So bankruptcies and collections, the fun stuff. These are listed on your report as public records. So as you can see here, public record information, this is an example of what a bankruptcy could look like on a credit report. So this one says it's been discharged and it'll have a date of when it's been discharged. Um, if you have had a bankruptcy, there are some lenders that, um, every lender is different. So it's, um, they all have their guidelines of if they do lending with a bankruptcy or how long after it would take for them to offer additional lending. So that's what that would report on there for. Um, some lenders want at least one year since the closure of their bankruptcy before they do any additional lending. Uh, collections is also a huge factor in your credit wellness. If there is a collection listed, it'll say how long it's been there and how long it's been open, if it's been disputed or not. I strongly recommend to pay off any open collections. An open collection is far more hurtful than a closed collection. A closed collection can, have, can be fine to have reported if it's been reasonable enough time for when you paid it off to how long after you apply for new credit. But basically a lender wants to see that you've addressed any derogatory accounts. So those are gonna be the open collections. So if you haven't, it's kind of gonna be really hard for a lender to approve anything new if you do have open collections, but if you close it, then you know at least you're paying the bills that you had and you're willing to try out getting new lines of credit and improve your credit going forward. So account information, this is the meat and potatoes of the credit report. When looking at the account information, things lenders are looking for are how long you've had the account, any late payments, the current status of the account, the limit and the balance, a good ratio between these two is essential in having a good score. So this, in this example, this John Doe has a auto account with Hometown Auto. This is kind of the lender information here, account number. And this is a closed end loan. So a closed end loan has an expiration date basically, which this one is 60 months. Um, it shows what the high balance is going to be, which means what the original balance was in some cases and close in cases. So the high balance here, this person got a loan for $19,118, their monthly payments $350, and this is what their balance is now. They opened it in 2013, so it looks like they've had it for about two years now. The date of the status is 2015, and the status is current. So another thing to note here is the account history. All of it looks green, good to go, okay. That means on every single date, they have made their payment on time. So that's great. Good job, John Doe. All right, so for this one, this is gonna show a revolving line of credit. So same thing, account information here. Um, this was a credit card, account number listed here. And this is a opened end. Uh, line of credit. So what that means is there's no expiration date. This credit stays good until the person pays it off or until they close it or for whatever reason. This is It stays open until it's closed, basically. Um, so same thing, high balance here. This may or may not be the credit limit. The credit limit's um, not reported, but the high balance which is the highest balance that this credit card has had is $14,219. Now that could be the limit, or it could be that the limit's $14,000 and the person overcharged their card $219 at one point. But yeah, so that's what this example is showing here. Today's 
well, not today's, but the recent balance was $273. So that's a pretty good ratio there. Um, a good ratio that you want to look for is 30%. Um, so making sure that your debt to income ratio is your, sorry, not to debt to income, your credit to limit ratio is 30%. Um, and in some cases, having low limits is hurtful. For example, if you have a thousand dollar limit on a credit card and you charge it $300, well, that's reaching your 30%. Now, $300 is pretty doable. You know, for most people that's, you can pay that back and that's easy to charge $300 on your credit card. You know, that could be one visit to the grocery store. So it is important to be mindful of your balances and mindful of your limits. Sometimes having smaller limits doesn't really help you. And also if you have larger limits, lenders are able to see that you can pay, you have history with working with larger limits. So something that I wanted to know is that closed accounts are helpful to show on your credit report for history. However, they are not super helpful for your score. So if you got a credit card from Bank of America back when you were 18, you know, sometimes it's not always helpful to close that. It might be beneficial for you to have it open, especially if there's no annual fee on that, just because it shows that you've had that line of credit for a long time. And one of the biggest things that will help your credit is time. So having closed accounts, it'll help with your history, but it's not really gonna be beneficial for your actual credit score, which is obviously something that consumers are really concerned about and that lenders are concerned about as well. All right, and another thing that I wanted to list with this is that the status, although it does say open, you can note that it's red. What that means is that the red status has a history of a late payment. So as you can see here, there is this little yellow guy here, which means that in May of 2015, this John Doe over, didn't pay their credit card for more than 30 days. So late payments don't reflect to the account until 30 days after the due date of no payment towards the loan or line of credit. Late payments reflect on their credit report for seven years. So definitely pay your bills. All right, so some reasons why a consumer could be getting denied. Um, I definitely think understanding what is hurting your credit is going to be the best guide in improving your credit health. So like I said, paying attention to any collections, making sure that you are addressing any open collections and having them reflect as, as closed if possible, or if they are open, contact the original creditor or original lender to dispute it if there has been issues and also disputing it with the three different bureaus. So recent escalation of debt. That could be concerning to a lender because let's say that you got a $10,000 credit card in two months ago. And now that credit card has a balance of $8,000. Well, you know, you could have gotten that credit card to buy a sweet motorcycle or you could be going on a ridiculous shopping spree. So those are the things that lenders are wondering about when and when they see those that recent escalation of debt and debt accumulating so fast, and then you also applying for more credit, it could be a little concerning to a lender. So insufficient credit or limited credit experience, this could happen in a scenario of you applying for a $350,000 mortgage, but only having a $500 credit card. So obviously, you know, credit, the biggest thing is gonna be time and experience. So having multiple lines of credit and uh, revolving and open end. So having an auto loan, having credit cards, maybe even some personal loans, all of that experience is really gonna help and it's gonna build your credibility with future lenders. So number of credit inquiries on a report, and that's you know just going back to the credit inquiries, you're just really want, gonna to wanna to be diligent with how many inquiries you are doing. It could be that you're rate shopping 
or it could be that you're trying to get 10 credit cards all at once, which could be concerning to a lender. So credit per performance and credit history, that's gonna go back to collections and any derogatory or adverse accounts. So you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you pay attention to those due dates, maybe put on, throw on that auto pay if possible and just pay your bills on time as much as possible. So ratio of balances to credit limits. So going back to kind of that 30%, that is a really good margin to stay within with any of your open lines of credit with your credit cards um, and making sure that you're not maxing out your credit cards and then applying for more credit. So just maintaining the balances as low as possible and trying to get them paid off every month is really gonna be key. Insufficient capacity to take on new credit. So that would be in the scenario where you have all your credit cards maxed out and you're applying for more. Well, that's gonna be really concerning for a lender because a lender is not gonna wanna put you in a rock and a hard place. And they also wanna make sure that they get paid. At the end of the day, that's what they're worried about is, is this person going to pay us back? So if you are maxing out your credit cards and applying for more, you know that's really showing that you don't have the capacity to take on your credit and that you should be really addressing the balances that you have on hand. Insufficient income for a request. And this could be a lot of different scenarios, but I mean, especially going back to the mortgage thing, it is different for any kind of, every type, every, you know, every type of, whether it's a credit card or an auto or a mortgage, the lenders are gonna be looking at different things, but definitely income is gonna be a big thing that they are looking to see if you have, income to take on that new line of credit. They want to make sure that you have enough money to pay for your groceries and rent, and they don't want to put you in a rock and a hard place, and uh, they want to make sure that you are making good financial decisions. Length of employment. So this one, obviously, every lender has different guidelines and every institution has different guidelines, but a good length of employment to have when applying for new credit is at least six months. So lenders really just wanna see that you have stability and that stability is going to help them determine if you are able to repay them back or not. You know, the, you, they don't want you getting a new, new job every single month. That's a little concerning for a lender because they wanna make sure that you're gonna have the means to pay back the money that you are borrowing against them. All right, so now how can I improve my credit? So there is no science to credit. It really is a huge mystery that we're figuring out day by day, but the biggest tips that I can offer for credit are credit management, um, making sure you're keeping up to date on your due dates, having auto payments set up really helps. Paying more than the minimum is really going to help in the long run with paying less interest. And also it helps your score when you are paying more than required from the lender. So addressing any adverse accounts, like I said, open collections are way more hurtful than to credit than closed collections. So definitely paying attention to what is listing on your credit. And one thing I will say is not every collection is going to be listed on every, every bureau. So there's those three bureaus, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. An open collection that is listed on Equifax may not be listed on TransUnion or Experian and vice versa. So it's definitely good to get all three reports, make sure that all the data is ac reporting accurately and you have the whole big picture of what all the three bureaus are reporting. And the Biggest factor is time. That is gonna be your biggest friend with credit is just time. It really, if, even if you were super in debt and you had all these collections and you won the lottery and you paid off everything, it's, it's still gonna take lenders some time to build that trust again, to make sure that they 
deem you trustworthy in order to lend to you. So yeah, time is really going to be the biggest help, um, especially when there's been any derogatory or uh, collections or bankruptcy listed on your report. Okay, so who can I talk to for help? Your local credit union or us, Cascadia Chapter of Credit Unions can definitely connect you to a local credit union or a local lender, a local banker to help you. Uh, we, we definitely want to help, um, but if you are a member of, your, of a credit union, going to your credit union and just talking about what your financial goals are and seeing how they can help you. Um, some self-help websites, you know, some people are introverts and that's okay and they want to do their own work. And uh, for those people, there is these websites here, Balance, Pro, and Rich and Green Path. Those are really going to be some awesome resources to check out and see what they recommend. Those are all free websites. So yeah, those are definitely worth checking out. So thank you so much for watching this video. And if you made it to the end, thank you so much. I hope you learned something. This is our contact information here. Um, and we would definitely be willing to help anyone. So hopefully this information was helpful and we look forward to connecting with you.